everybody welcome back to my channel it's so good to have you all with us today um thanks for tuning in again if you're new to my channel hey how are you go ahead and click that subscribe button for me um go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and yeah so today we're just gonna talk about marriage and we have two special guests that i will introduce after we pray so yeah but okay so everybody bow your heads close your eyes and let's pray Dear Lord God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for allowing us to come together safely in order to learn more about you and just the different processes that you have when it comes to relationships and everything like that. God, we ask that everything that we say comes from you and that we are, you know, just relatable and able to be understood and that everything that we say is for your people. We just ask you to be with us. Thank you. In your name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 So, like I said, we have two special guests today, and this is my sister and my brother-in-law. We're just gonna kind of have like a little interview with them to get some advice for you guys and um, just ask them a few questions and stuff like that. Okay. And so, yeah. <laughs> so let's get right into it. All right. So. How long have you been married and how long did you date? So we got married in 2013, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> and no, 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, we've been dating since, since I was in high school. So since my junior year of high school, I believe, is when we were dating. So that's probably like 2000. Yeah. So we've been, so we dated longer than we been. Um, how would you all like describe marriage? Like, what is marriage to you? And like, you know, your view of marriage. Well, I guess um, marriage um, is definitely it's a commitment um, and a I mean, it's a commitment to to one person, of course. The pretty much like the vows that you make there, you know, um, from in sickness and health. Um, to love each other and to um, do that in terms of everything that the, uh, having, I guess, the best interest for that other person. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's definitely a commitment. Uh, is the, the strongest word that comes to mind for marriage. Mm -hmm. What you want? Is that for? plus getting to spend as much time as you want with hopefully somebody that you like and <laughs> somebody that's a friend. Right. You get the right. Right. Because you're right. going to spend some time. Right. You are going to get to know everything about the person. <laughs> yeah. What you thought you knew. Yeah. You thought yeah. you knew. But, uh, it's, it's, it's a time that is just 100% realness all the time. Mm -hmm. And whatever it is, is what it is. So it's good to get to see that person in another light yeah. and to grow in understanding that person and understanding yourself too. Mm -hmm. Like what, what is something that I need to work on or right. what is something, cause, cause it's not always what that other person is doing or what lots of times is understanding yourself and how you can deal with things too. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think marriage is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was marriage something that you've always wanted? Mm -hmm. No, that's interesting. Good, you answer that. I always, well, I don't think I ever, like, I never had a lot of desires that I think a lot of girls have had. Marriage, I felt like, you know, like it might be something cool, but I don't think that I could say that I was like, oh, I can't wait till I get married because I am fit. Like, I don't think I, I ever really even envisioned what my wedding would look like. You know, like, oh, I gotta have this big gown and I have to have all these flowers and all this place. But, um, so, but I don't think that I've ever been against the idea of marriage. Mm -hmm. So, that's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, for me, um, it, it kind of like just thinking about it realistic, you know, you, I saw it. I saw the, um, you know, whether it be on TV or just like my, my parents. And, and um, you know, like I just, I always felt like I would be married. Um, I was really like just the, like, I guess it would be like romantic mm -hmm. kind of type anyway. Like I'm 
thinking about, um, you know, like marriage and that commitment and um, having somebody, my faith, you know, then to bringing that into play. Um, like, so I wanted to, definitely wanted to be in a relationship, wanted to glorify God, so I wanted to be married. All those things, you know, coming together. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess like I always, I thought about it and it, um, you know, it's just, God provided, you know. Kind of so. Have y'all, you know, shared the story of how y'all came to Christ and how y'all, you know, became Christian and stuff with each other? You know, I don't so know. Much. I would say not really. You know, um, we never like shared verbatim. But I think that's something like we always had a relationship with Christ since we've known each other. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, it's never not like shared, but that's an interesting question. So let's do it now. Okay, so <laughs> when I, I don't know how old I was, I was probably, I don't know, I was young. And I remember at our house, my, my bedroom was where our den is now. So right outside of my mom and dad's room. And I had a pull out sofa and that's where I slept when I was sleeping there. And I remember one night, like we would always have like a family devotional time. And um, you know, I remember one night next to the pull out sofa, mama was like, okay, so, um, Oh, you know, so you want to be a Christian? Like you, you know, some something you along that <laughs> that line. And so I feel like I remember getting saved on my knees next to the pull-out sofa. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the memory that I have of becoming a Christian. You know, or mm -hmm. you know, dedicating my life to, to Christ. Um, for me, though, my greatest memory of like being saved and knowing that I always knew the importance. I always you know, knew about the Lord, but for me, I, I think it's when I uh, did, I had my baptism, uh, which was later on in life, I probably like in middle school or something like that. Um, but for me, you know, that was just big, just giving that um, representation of my relationship with Christ. Uh, but as far back as I can remember, you know, like I just having that relationship with God and, um, but that is the point that I really just remember is, is the baptism and dedicating my life to the Lord. And, uh, it was um, the church, uh, my church, we were used to be affiliated with like this umbrella of um, churches, I guess. And um, it was like their yearly conference in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I was there and they, uh, in one of the services, you know, the preacher gave a call, like nobody wants to, you know, be saved, you know, come to the altar. And I, I was the only person that came up, I had to be, um, maybe 15, 14 or 15 at that time. I was the only one that got up. So after, you know, the prayer, you know, I went outside and um, this bishop was like, you know, you know, like, good job from getting up, like, even though he's the only one. And uh, mm -hmm. he's like, do you want it? I was like, yeah, I want So uh, he just started praying with me outside. And I'm like, yeah, in front of all of these people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to like, yeah, I'm, I want God, but you trying to pray yeah. with me in front of all these people. I just went in the prayer line. I'm okay, I'll wait till later. <laughs> But yeah, so like we were praying and like maybe five minutes later, it seemed like everybody that was inside the service was like outside, like praying with me. So it was like, it was a lot of people, um, but like people, people just praying or whatever. And then um, probably a couple minutes later, I think I went to um, my aunt's room. She was a first lady at the time, she still is a first lady. Um, and um, I was with her and uh, my cousin and we went to their room and um, like that was, I think that was the moment, kind of my breakthrough point, kind of getting mm -hmm. from all of the people and just kind of really being able to focus mm -hmm. myself and like my mind, be like, all right, look, like I, I'm ready to let go mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. make some type of change. But like, yeah, that was, that was it. My Sunday school teacher at the time, she told the story of heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. In our Sunday school class, like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go there. Don't so. fix this right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, um, I'll take that ticket then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.
I mean, that was really it. Like, she was just telling the story of heaven and hell. And then she asked if we wanted to, you know, um, mm -hmm. give our lives to God. And I was like, yeah, Come definitely. On. So, Come on. Yeah, pretty basic, but that was it. <laughs> so, you were saying, Joey, about, like, how, you know, you wanted to be in a relationship and then you wanted to glorify God. And so, that's where marriage came in. Mm -hmm. So, like, what are some practical ways that you, you guys feel like um, you acknowledge God's authority and just God in your marriage and in the house, like, in your household? Um, you know, we, okay, well, like, first of all, um, you know, prayer, like, we, we pray and, um, you know, kind of the, the things that are basic but just foundational, mm -hmm. like, prayer, we, um, you know, we make the effort to, you know, read together or even more so like you know I'll just check with her sometimes and you know like we'll talk about things we've heard and um I mean just keeping Jesus in the forefront of I think you know, here recently you know we've been trying to memorize verses together and um re restate them we're very very active in the church um and you know that's that's good because that's that fellowship and we have that accountability mm -hmm. you know i just think those are just some some of the ways kind of in the overall what would you say now? yeah that mm -hmm. and um you know doing doing stuff like this you know mm -hmm. like getting around other couples or other people um you know i know it next year that we would like to start doing that a lot more because mm -hmm. we used mm -hmm. to do that often mm -hmm. <laughs> but um you know but just being sure that you are around people and are willing to be that example around mm -hmm. others that'll help you too because mm -hmm. that'll kind of guard you and make sure that what you're saying is what you're doing mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and um yeah just just being open and willing to share with people and to hear from people too you right. know because you need to have those ones that come to you and say look y'all really need to do this or you aren't doing this or what about that you know so being sure that you have folks that you can talk to and people that can talk to you too so you have to be teachable in that um, moment too but I think that's how we put God first yeah you know like some of the things because I was sitting here like even as she was um, talking like I think about the evangelistic side because she was talking about you know having like being around other people and um, in that mindset because a lot of the things where I was mentioning like the praying and the reading and that's great and we're supposed to do those things but if we're like being actively involved in our spiritual life which is being actively involved in our spiritual growth it is like an intentional um, thing so you know so when Jennifer we talk about like work or you know life things and how we're gonna handle that how we should handle that like she may tell me if I'm talking about a situation you know like okay well you know like maybe think about doing it this way she can hold me accountable mm -hmm. you know and I really think that is how we glorify God you know um, we can get caught up in like, you know, praying and doing this and reading this, and we should be. But um, I think about James, we that's the, you know, where it is about not just being hearers, but, you know, being doers. And if you don't do the things in the world, you're going to need that accountability because it's not all, it's not our natural way to act sometimes. Right. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, next question How important is communication to you? Yeah. <laughs> Man, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, like, communication. So, Jennifer knows, like, I've been on communication um, a lot, or that's been like a recurring theme, um, you know, just in our life um, here lately. Um, communication is, is so important on so many levels um, because even now, like, there's several times where, uh, you know, because we're on this subject of marriage, right? Like, because communication is, is, is broad, you know, but with marriage, so when we send messages to each other, we have to 
be mindful of how the other the person purpose. receives it. How, yeah. And then we have to be patient with that. Do you guys, I guess, not necessarily welcome it, but I guess, do you kind of expect for sometimes for there to be like conflicts and everything like that? Or is it more of a like, you really try to like avoid it? Like it's something that's okay to have differences sometimes and conflicts sometimes. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, I, I think it's okay to have differences. Period. Yeah. Like, you know, like it might be stuff that he says. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And I'm not going to be like, mm, okay, well, I agree. Because I might not agree with that. Mm -hmm. But I think that, again, to effectively communicate, it it involves hearing at least what the other person is saying, what they're mm -hmm. thinking, right? So as far as like conflict or whatever, I don't think I avoid it. I don't think, I think in my case, lots of times, I think what I have to do is process it internally first before I'm ready to like speak on it or to do something about it. Which is weird because that could be interpreted as, what's she doing? She ain't doing nothing. She don't care about nothing. She just won't do it. So, you know, so that's another, like ver verbal and nonverbal cues are important important too yeah. so again so it's I think it's knowing the person and understanding like okay well if he wants to talk about this now mm -hmm. and he knows I'm not ready to talk about it now perhaps sometimes I might have to compromise and talk more now mm -hmm. or maybe he'll compromise and be like okay I just need to give her some space so she can handle and process stuff the way that she wants to but as far as conflict goes I think that we're pretty good or or I think that we're getting better mm -hmm. at you know kind of putting stuff on the table mm -hmm. and not letting it go for a long time without mm -hmm. addressing it yeah so if you have the ability and the willingness to just kind of keep an even kilter and not go off and not do it and re really try to understand it and appreciate what that person is thinking or feeling or where they're coming from or whatever i think that alone can resolve a lot of conflict if you because then what it turns into is a pride deal it's like you got to get your point across and let me tell you about <laughs> what you're not going to do but i think once you take yourself out of it that'll help a lot of the conflict that might come up in marriage or in any friendship or any work relationship yeah, anything yeah. like how do you keep like your marriage and your relationship um, from getting, you know, like boring or tiring or frustrating, you know, all that kind of stuff. So like basically how do you keep it <laughs> loving, you know, something? Mm -hmm. yeah, so. mm -hmm. We stay pretty busy anyway now. Um, so that being said, um, like it's, it's, so it's always something going on. Even if, okay, so because again, like work life, mm -hmm. uh, the whole work life balance, all of that, but it's something going on. So I'm saying that because even that, that's not necessarily my favorite, like with like a, like with work life, but that keeps something always happening. Um, <laughs> what else? Like we hear, like we we watch, uh, you know, TV and do things like that. But if, you know, like, we have free weekends or things like that, we just plan and, you know, like a getaway or either we'll be talking to each other and just say, you know, like, we need to get away and we and we get away <laughs> kind of deal. So, um, and that's always good. I think that's, that is really like, of course, like a big portion in terms of like fun is doing something different doing something different like because it doesn't have to be be huge you know like we've gone on big trips by the grace of God God is good but just doing things different we like to try restaurants we yeah um like, mm -hmm, like to eat <laughs> you know um but That's where I get it, from. <laughs> I get it, 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 it does come to 
it's a lot of different things you can do to help that. Going back to what Jennifer was saying earlier, I think that linking up with other couples too. Um, because yeah, if you if you try to do it all by yourself, it's just gonna be difficult. Cause you, you're gonna be limited to just what you do. Which would be nice for some time, and then you probably get bored with that. Cause stuff is just, you know, that's just how life is, you know, so. And it, and it doesn't have to cost money. No, like, like, I mean, like, the stuff that you do, like, we'll go and we'll walk around the mall. We ain't buying nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we like, walking around. We might go and walk downtown. We might go to one of the art shows downtown. There are things to do where it doesn't require money, but still, Im yeah. still involves getting to know the other person. Mm -hmm. Plus, something that I think is cool with us is like if he's in a band and out mm -hmm. doing gigs and I'm taking pictures so I, I can go take pictures yeah. with him. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing fo photos or something, he can come with me and hold my bag and you know but I <laughs> but but I think that you like I like you just have to be willing to do things that you mm -hmm. would normally do or do things that the other person enjoys doing. You know, and not being like, oh, I gotta go hold her bag at this oh, thing. You know, yeah. but just be, but be there and enjoy being there. Don't be there and be like, ready for this video? Yeah. Yeah. But throw this thing over here and go walk away. Now we are just going to give, I guess, you all some advice, but also just kind of talking to our younger selves. You know, like before, now, in this moment, what are some things you would say? to your younger self like during dating before even you know getting to know each other or you know leading up to getting into a relationship what are some things that you would say to yourself as a younger person i think i would say chill out you tell yourself to yeah chill out. i would say chill out it's not that big of a deal you like it's like oh, when God. when oh, you're in high school or i was chill <laughs> or like middle school or whatever like it's like oh my first oh I, oh I got my first boyfriend oh I got my first oh I'm having my first like like it's at the time those things seem so important and you invest so much time and energy into those things and really a lot of the time when you look back at those things it's stuff that you could have been putting energy into something else or doing something. So I think I would say, chill out. It's not that serious. That's that's interesting. But the only thing, like, I'm just go with what, what's coming to my mind anyway. Like when I think about myself, I mentioned earlier about like being that romantic and being like that. I would tell myself to stay focused. Um, and especially in terms of like relationships, you know, um, because, you know, I can definitely think of relationships and things that I would go through because of the kind of person I am, that they, they were kind of like a distraction, you know, definitely. And um, that being said, I know that if I held to the values that I already had, you know, and then thank God, been able to come back and really be focused on them, that I think that I could stay focused and um, probably, you know, would have achieved, per se, um, more, which I thank God for His grace and, you know, I lack nothing really now. I have all that I need to give Him glory. I thank God for that. I'll probably tell myself um, to be okay with yourself, like learn to be okay with yourself before you to everything in your power to make other people like you. Yeah. It wasn't until I started to get it okay myself that I started to really see, man, like all of these people that I'm trying to please, like they're nothing like me and I probably should be around a whole lot more people or like different people. And like that's when I started to find like my core group of friends that I found, like even me and Alicia, like it was in those group of friends where I started to learn to accept myself. And if they didn't accept me, we just went like, it's okay. Like everybody's not gonna be your friend, that's fine. I would definitely, you know, tell myself in the area of relationships to chill out, you know, and to love yourself and to have self-worth. Um, just because I've like, I've told you guys, you know, stories, my college testimony, everything like that, the stuff that I kind of went through. And it's like, I would definitely talk to that person and, you know, be like, 
Get, yeah, <laughs> get your grades. Like, do what you gotta do to, you know, be good and be successful for yourself, and to, you know, be proud of yourself, and live in life like you're supposed to at the age that you are. Because that's another thing. I probably lived like I was 30 at, you know, 15, and that was definitely not how it should have been. And so, definitely. Because life is so much more than <clears throat> the 12 years of schooling that mm -hmm, people do. Mm -hmm. But it's crazy because those 12 years of schooling and what you do during that time can have such an impact on the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So who you brand yourself as during those mm -hmm. times and the things that you do during those times mm -hmm. can follow you throughout the rest of your life. Right. And so just, just being very prayed up, <laughs> <laughs> very, um, uh, like, um, very introspective mm -hmm. and just taking time to really understand who you are will, will get you so much further, um, when mm -hmm. it is time for you to go out and create that life that you want. Cool. Well, thank you guys so much for sitting with us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, well guys, that's it for this one. So thanks again for tuning in this week. If you are new, hit that subscription button. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Hit it as many times as you can. I think it'll only accept it once, but that's okay. <laughs> just hit it. Like and share, it's just one share. We'll reach that one person who needs it. And that's what we need. Cause that's what we're doing. We're just sharing the love of God, you know, through this channel. But yes, yeah. I believe that's everything. <laughs> Everybody's social media will be down in the description box. So go look for that down there. I really hope you guys got something from this and that you just really heard our hearts because that's what we gave to you today. That's it. But overall, I just want you to remember, we love you. God loves you. You are loved. See you later. Bye.